Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. And we're back with our live Tuesday show here on Think Tech Hawaii. We are young talents making way, and I'm Andrea Gabrielli, your host. Involvement in the Hawaii science sphere can take young science talents on incredible journeys of discovery, growth, and even, you know, around the world. So, Today, I don't have just one young talent, but two of them making way. Ladies and gentlemen, Brandon and Ryan Wynn, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having us. <laughs> and so you are brothers, and you got interested in the Hawaii science fair, the science fair where students compete with science projects and you know get involved in all sorts of activities. And since you've been involved since 2015, Yes, that's but why. why? Um, if I'm being honest, I actually didn't want my parents to find out about it at the very beginning because at the time I had a very basic project. And then I'm really glad I actually talked. Well, I didn't talk to them about it. My dad looked in my backpack and found out, uh, found the forms for the science fair. And from there, I actually got to have a project with uh, dentistry, involved in dentistry and teeth. Right. And then from there, I actually got to go to ISEF. And that's where this whole journey began. That's how we, we met Harry Davis. And yeah. What, what is IS, IS, ISF? Yeah, for uh, those who don't know, yeah. ISEF is the International Science and Engineering Fair. Oh, uh, okay. It's held in three places and every it's on time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Ryan, how did you get started with the science fair? Well, I started after Brandon, and um, we both ended up having pretty personal topics, and this gave us a lot of interest past um, accidentally getting into the science fair like he did. Right. Yeah. And so science fair, basically, what are your, you know, experiences? What do you think about it, you know, in terms of uh, uh, experience for students, even other students that would like to, you know, participate in the science fair? Well, I think it's great. There are so many things you can do as a result of the science fair. There are many things that we have done because of the science fair. And I think, well, really, everybody should try to take this opportunity and, well, first of all, learn, meet new people, figure out new things, and do science. I think it's great. And Brendan, uh, what kind of opportunities, you know, since Ryan mentioned it, mm -hmm. what, what, what did it give it to you? Well, first off, going to ISF is a great opportunity, period. Because That's the international yeah. science fair, yeah. And then from there, you, you make connections with people. You get to meet future PIs. You get to meet people who will bring you to other people and introduce you and put in a good word. And then also, you get to go to other conferences. Uh, I went to the International AIDS Society conference last summer. And hopefully, I'm going to be, go well, not hopefully, I'm going to be going to again uh, this year in Amsterdam and opportunities like that only came about because I was able to talk to people and uh, we made connections with people and we are introduced you have traveled as w the world yeah as well in t for going to these conferences you've been to Pennsylvania you've been to Europe uh, you've been to LA as well you've been to a variety of places you know how does this uh, you know I experience of science and traveling sharing your research sharing your results uh, you know what do you learn about uh, you know from from these experiences well, we do end up learning a lot, seeing, especially with many of these conferences and fairs that we go to, there are so many other projects and so many other people. Right. And we get to learn a lot from these other people, and we also get to learn from uh, researchers and actual, uh, say, higher up people who have done their work in this field for in many, this field for before. longer time. Yeah. Yeah. So you have participated into this year's science fair, is that right? Yes, yeah. that's right. And so you are, Ryan, you are the first place uh, overall best in category for um, biochemistry, bio or biomedical, biomedical and yeah, biochemistry. Yeah. And you, Ryan, are the second place overall best in category for cellular and molecular biology. For molecular yeah. biology, so you've you've been involved with this. But you know, I'm just curious to learn more about uh, your journey. You know, uh, since 2015 all the way to today, and it's continuing. You know, with more yeah. projects, I understand mm -hmm. as well. So let's see some pictures. You know, of you. You know, doing the science fair. Let's see. Let's 
let's see the, the first pictures. Oh, okay. So <laughs> this first picture, this is from the beginning to today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love this picture because um, they were both at the state science fair. One was in 2015, and then one is was the, recently. Oh, okay, 2015. This is the Hawaii Convention Center. Yes. Yeah, that's the oh, convention. So that's the state science fair. Yeah, we're um, at the Hawaii Convention Center, and then we we decided to try to recreate a picture this year. Oh, nice. In okay. front of the fountain, because mom had just sent it to us. So they're like, oh, hey, look, let's try to do the same thing in front of the fountain, and we can use it as uh, use it as sort of a progress pic. So right. every time I look at it, I sort of smile because it's, it's a beautiful yeah. picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, nice yeah. to see. Uh, so from 2015 all the way to today, what has changed? Oh. You know, in terms of your experience, in terms of you know what you have learned, in terms of. So I, I guess my question might be: How does the science fair help you to grow? In terms of, yeah. Well, as I said before, there are a lot of different experiences and things that we can learn. But um, the progression that you can see in our actual projects is very, very apparent. <laughs> I started out, well, in that first picture in 2015. I didn't make it very far because what I did was, I'm pretty sure it was a, I grew sugar crystals <laughs> or something. And now I'm up to doing MRI research. And well, I'm sure that's part of the growth. Yeah, let's talk about more about your because you are um, you are in uh, Kaiser High School, mm -hmm. uh, but you are also taking college level classes at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Mm -hmm. um, this is, I believe, is a very good opportunity for you to you know experience college mm -hmm. when you're still in high school. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, and so. Well, yeah, maybe Brandon much, can, yeah. <laughs> what it's been about is is getting these credits and interacting with even more people. It's uh, opening our opportunities. Because up. you get access to the labs, mm -hmm. yeah, as well. Yeah, we have one of your mentors here who's gonna be joining us, Dr. Harry Davis. Yeah, from uh, what do you what do you really? Um, how is uh, you know for a high school student being involved in uh, in cutting edge research and learn about methods? You know to do science actually yeah it's exhilarating um basically being able to play with these these toys i guess yeah like because that, you do yeah. experiments and everything exactly and last my project was on uh, my last project was on using embryos and uh, plasmids i thought of it as as playing with legos where instead of you know lego tiny lego blocks who are playing with genes and putting those together and uh, trying to affect the development of something trying you to don't want to make a mess with them though yeah oh yeah no very <laughs> right. much right um so let's see more pictures, yeah? Of, uh, so what was the, the first project? This, I believe, is the one of the very first projects of yours. And you began with Vogue, is that right? Sir? That's right. Yeah. For Ryan. This, um, the, for the very first thing that we did, the first actual science project, was something to do with Vogue. Mm -hmm. So tell us what you're doing here. Well, yeah. uh, in this picture, I think in, Ryan, On the left oh, is Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, OK. So I'm actually holding a few of our Vogue samples that we pulled from Kilauea, I'm sure. Uh, the plume which we can also see in a later picture. Yeah. Then uh, I was just culturing cells, I think. Yeah. I Your culture is cells. Yeah. cells on the white pictures, mm -hmm. yeah? Okay. So for that project, uh, our, our goal is just to see how Vogue affects um, the viability of cell lines. And Let's see one more picture so we can see. Okay, so this is... Uh, so you, you didn't go there, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we didn't go in. No. But we, we put a sampling machine, a kind of sampling machine that we created there, and we gathered um, Vogue samples. Okay, okay. So that's Ryan overlooking with one of the binoculars on the summit of Kilauea volcano, overlooking the area where you place this box to collect bog. That's right. Yeah. So you've been, you know, um, for, the, for that particular project, for this bog project, which is the first uh, that you decided to do, why did you actually do it? Um, the, the project sort of came about when we were uh, once, once we actually had contact with Harry through the International Science Fair and lots of people uh, through that and being able to expand from just a teeth project to what I considered an actual science fair project, something that really excited me, um, we were trying to just browse through things that really hit home for me. Uh, the, the thing that resonated was when I was around five or six, we used to live on the Big Island. 
and oh. I was in and out of the hospital for Where on months. the Big Island? Uh, Kona, we lived in Kona. Oh, Kona, so yeah. the VOG is... Yeah. yeah, I was very sensitive to the VOG. And even when we were doing that project, we would make sulfur dioxide and things like that to try to em um, emphasize, try yeah. to resemble, make something that resembled the VOG. And I was sensitive to that for a while, too. So a lot of times it was, it was uh, an emotional connection to the VOG and trying to make sure it didn't happen to anybody else. And that's what drove that project. Right, right. Now, uh, uh, Ryan, uh, we mentioned that you've been involved with this early college program, you know, where you basically could take classes, credits, and everything. Um, one question that I would like to ask you, because, you know, the audience might be interested in as well, is uh, can everybody do this? Can everybody do, you know, be involved with early college uh, when you are still in high school? Well, I sure, I believe so. There are many different programs that you can enter into, and all of these are, I'm sure all of these are great. I know many of my friends who are trying to get into it, and somebody, somebody in my chemistry class at KCC, or Capulani Community College, right. was, I, I actually met her again at the science fair, and it was kind of funny. Oh. So there are already <laughs> plenty, of pe plenty of people who are doing this kind of thing, and I think that's great. Right, okay. Let's see more pictures, more pictures of your, of, of your you know, activities. Oh wow, this looks like Paris. This, this <laughs> was in Paris. Um, this was last year's summer. Yeah. One of the first times we actually left the country. So we're looking yeah. at, well, that's the Eiffel Tower mm -hmm. on the left. And then on the right, uh, oh well, there is uh, Brendan yeah. with, who is the, is that uh, a scientist? Or? That's my mentor for this year. She works at Jabsom. Her name is uh, Ivo Sabendar. Bender, yeah, yeah, doctor, yeah. And she works with HIV and epidemiology, which is what that conference was actually about. It was the International AIDS Society conference. Did, did you go with her? Yes, I went with her as an observer, as a, as a student. And uh, from there, I, I, that was basically where I got most of my education in HIV. Uh, a more in-depth look at what's going on now. Um, how are people pioneering the field? And uh, what are the, the constant advancements that we're, we're So making? now I, I understand you're more interested in HIV and this epidemiology for future projects as well? Um, currently I'm looking at uh, uh, trying to identify patterns um, in epidemiology. In, in these yeah. viruses as well. In how HIV is, is developing and the distribution of subtypes in various locations. Uh, that's what my project will be on next year. Right, <laughs> okay, okay. But Ryan, you have also, you know, traveled around, uh, I understand, uh, you are going uh, to Europe in a couple of weeks, yeah? Um, actually, we're flying out tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> and what's the destination? I believe we're starting in, I'm not sure, but we're going to, eventually we're going to Amsterdam yeah. for this next uh, similar convention. For this convention, yeah. yeah. Okay. So last year's Paris, this year it's Amsterdam. Both times we got to go, and hopefully this time Ryan will be coming with me. Yeah. So have, we'll have a picture with both of us. Right, right. Okay, okay. Well, up next we're going to meet one of your mentors, Dr. Harry Davis, who is going to share a little bit with us a little bit more about the science fair as an opportunity, you know, for our young talents to really max out and, you know, um, become ambassadors for science. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger. And hungry mornings make tired days. Grumpy days. Bleh kind of days. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. When we're not hungry for breakfast, we're hungry for more. More ideas. More dreams. More fun. When kids aren't hungry for breakfast, they can be hungry for more. Go to hungeris.org and lend your time or your voice to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. Hello, my name is Stephanie Mock, and I'm one of three hosts of Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer series. Our other hosts are Matt Johnson and Pumai Weigert, and we talk to those who are in the fields and behind the scenes of our local food system. We talk to farmers, chefs, restaurateurs, and more to learn more about what goes into sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. We are on at Thursdays at 4 p.m., and we hope we'll see you next time. <laughs> and we're back. We're young talents making way here on FinTech Hawaii. And now we have a new guest joining us for the second part of the show, Dr. Harry Davis from the University of Hawaii at Manoa. 
Welcome to the show, Harry. Thank you. Yeah. Nice to be here. Thank you. So, Harry, you are a um, mentor to um, Brendan and Ryan, mm -hmm. but you're also a judge at the State of Hawaii Science and Engineering sure. Fair. You've been a judge this year as well. Um, what kind of uh, opportunity does the science fair present uh, for young students? And also, as a judge, uh, what kind of students can join, you know? Well, you know, a lot of people think that, oh, science is hard and all that kind of stuff. But no, science is just common sense. This is like, here's a problem I want to find out. Then I apply common sense to try to figure out that problem. The scientific method is simply common sense. So it teaches any student uh, how to think, how to use common sense, how to solve a problem, and how to focus on a problem. And this is like a life and skill. And it can be any problem. A life skill that everybody should have. So it's not just for scientists, it's not just for people who are exceptional in any way, it's for everybody. Right. And then, you know, you see some of the opportunities that can present themselves when, when students really put in the effort. And I don't think it's, you know, from my experience of 30 years in teaching and everything else, I don't think it's like the exceptional kids that make all the big uh, discoveries. It's the ones that will work hard, the ones that become dedicated to the, to the topic. Right. And when you're judging the science fair, personally, I'm not looking for who's the best. I want to find out what do these kids, what, 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 I asked them, how do you get started on the project? And there's really interesting stories like Brian and, and uh, Ryan have. And um, then I want to find out, well, what did you do? And then when you ask them, what do they do? Not what their mentor did, not what their parents told them to do, what they did. And you see that the ownership that they get over it and that they're proud of something that they can create. They created this on their own. If without them, it wouldn't happen. Right. And in terms of uh, uh, mentors, mm. you know, uh, it's also important for the students to have a guidance, yeah? Because yes. they want to uh, basically access this problem, they want to address it, they want to try and find a solution with scientific methods, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. But also, uh, do we have m enough mentors for the science fair? Because there are, it's growing yeah. every year. Absolutely, we, we don't have enough. People. We don't have enough teachers in the schools that really will have the time or propensity to, to help a student. And then we don't have enough people in the university and in, in the private sector to, to act as mentors. Right. So I can't tell you how many students have contacted me, oh, I tried to get a, a mentor, but I can't find one. So I didn't do science fair last year because I couldn't find a mentor. And this is really... Um, this, you know, how do you say, dampening their interests. Because if you keep turning a kid off on what they want to do, eventually they're going to find something else to do. Right, right. And so we're losing potential scientists, we're losing potential people who could go into science and learn about science and then contribute to the overall knowledge of, you know, science literacy, literacy in our country. So we really, really, we really need more mentors, more scientists as we well. Do. Who can, yeah, who can. How many students did you mentor? Uh, Brendan and Ryan, or, or you have more? Uh, last year, I think I had about a dozen. Wow. But some of them were in groups. They were, they you come got in it, pods. You got them all. <laughs> <laughs> they come in pods sometimes. In the, right, right. Yeah. Um, and no, it is it is a disruption to the lab, but I think it's it's worth it. it absolutely, yeah. You know, You're investing in somebody's future, Making our future, our futures as well. Absolutely. You're still young. I'm not. I need to find a replacement. <laughs> <laughs> so we're training our replacements, and we're and we're we're contributing to the overall science literacy of of our nation, which is really really low at this point. Take an example like GMO. Uh, the average person has no idea what GMO is. All they know is that it's bad. Mm -hmm. Right. So a GMO is what we need to feed the rest of the world, to cure diseases, all kind of stuff like this. And most of the GMO is totally not even considered GMO.
but the people who don't know anything can drive the whole conversation. So now everybody's against GMO. It's being banned by politicians. And they don't even know what it is. Um, when the public is not literate about science, that gives opportunity for predators to come in and just tell us anything, and we believe it. And they're all trying to make it buck. Well, but um, in terms of uh, science fair, you know, going, because GMO, we could, you know, talk about a variety, e exactly, yeah. Uh, science fair is also very important uh, for them to learn actually how to present uh, science and, yes. and you know and you know we want to be literate about this we want to be able to talk about science and to yes. uh Ryan, how was uh, you know uh, working with dr um harry davis here <laughs> to learn about science because you you spend a lot of time and, and brendan as well yeah how was it? Yeah, it, it was very helpful. He was one of our first um, big, big mentors right. that we worked on for a while, and he helped us with many different facets of the project. Uh, definitely one of them being how to present, how to talk. And this is extremely important for not only the science fair and doing well in the science fair, but um, life. You're going to need to learn these talking skills. You're going to need to and, interact and with many different people. Brandon, how about you? Um, I'd, I'd like to preface by saying we, it would be very difficult for us to have gotten where we are now without the help of uh, Dr. Harry Davis and his wife, Bibi, who was Bibi. on the show with Ryan. Who uh, had them, yeah. Ago, yeah. <laughs> um, because of them, we, we, were opened up, we opened up to so many opportunities in, with the early college and meeting other mentors, stuff like that. We wouldn't have been able to have, have a project as stable as ours was, um, even with the drive to do things like that. A lot of people have, have that drive, but it's very difficult to, have, to find a, a mentor who's, who's accommodating and really patient with you and willing, willing to uh, help you along the path of achieving your goal. Right, right. Harry. How was working with Ryan and Brendan? <laughs> uh, they were okay. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had to teach them how to squirt each other with water bottles. They wouldn't do it. They was like the lab is very serious. I'm like, okay, here's a water <laughs> bottle. Learn how to use it. But um, no, they learned a lot. And and uh, at first, you know, they're very cautious and everything, and they don't know that they can do this. They don't know that they can mix these things. And yeah, so you have to teach them that you know it's. Once you learn about the background, and they were very good, they were studious. They would, you know, they would Google things Diligent. and stuff like that. <laughs> and um, what you're really doing in science oftentimes is trying to gather resources. So you're teaching them, or they're learning how to be resourceful. Right. So one question that you know, some people occasionally ask me or ask us as well, how do you get involved in the science fair? We've, we've been talking about the journey that Ryan and Brandon had, the growth that they you know, were able to sustain by joining the science fair, but how do you actually join it? Is that something you do with your school where you're... Yeah, so um, you know, the Hawaii Academy of Science, of which I'm a member and my wife is a member, so one of the major goals of Hawaii Academy of Science is the science fair. Right. So they're affiliated with the International Science Fair, but you have district science fairs. Uh, you, well, first of all, you have school science you fairs. You start with your own school, yeah. If, it's, if there's enough kids, you can have a school science fair. And then there's a district science fair, like the Honolulu district mm -hmm. that they're in, which has only been around for maybe three, or maybe three years, something right. like that. You guys were one of the first ones in that uh, the district. Oh, wow. And you won at the district, yeah? Um, you, you were this year. first place winner this yeah. year. Yeah. I was okay. first and right in the second. Right. At the top together. So then the <laughs> winners of the district fair, and obviously they're going to go to the International Science Fair. And then ones that make the cut at the district fairs didn't go up to the um, state science fair. So I've been judging the state science fair, I don't know, maybe 30 years, 20, 25 years, something like wow. that. And uh, you, you, you've seen numbers of students going up. Yeah, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. And so there's more opportunities. And a lot of this we have to give credit to for the Department of Education. Right, right. So I remember when my wife was teaching at Farrington, she had a hard time getting students to be able to leave Farrington and go to HCC to take college level classes. There was like, there wasn't a mechanism to do that. But now this is becoming standard. And so 
and it gives more opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I guess uh, uh, one question: uh, How did you find Dr. Harry? How do you find a mentor? Maybe. Brendan, yeah. For us, we were really lucky to have uh, gone to ISF that first year and being able to interact with lots of scientists, and especially Dr. Harry Davis and his wife. But for a lot of people, it's just a matter of reaching out um, through teachers, through, in our case, professors. You get to meet PIs, people with open research projects, things that you're interested in. And uh, that's where you start developing a project. So you did it together, Ryan, you did it together um, to find a mentor? Yeah, I guess, in a way. We we did have to knock on a few doors and stuff, but it was easier for us since we had um, already had these open doorways. Okay. And so, Eric, basically every student who joins the science fair has a mentor, and it can be, you know, he or she can be this mentor either in the school or researchers in universities. Is that right? Well, unfortunately, I would say that probably most don't have a mentor. So say you're a high school or intermediate school kid, so your only way to even know about this would be maybe something on the news or maybe a think tech program. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> and um, maybe your teacher would know something about it, right? Right. And so it has to start with the teachers. So oftentimes the teachers are really busy, they got so many kids in the classroom and they've got all kinds of behavior problems they're dealing with. So it's really hard for someone to find someone who can really mentor them and show them where the doors are, show them what the opportunities are. So the teachers that are really well known at doing this um, have been recognized by Hawaii Academy of Science, several of them. So we have guys from like Waipa who have, who mentor like dozens of students. Such, such as you do, for example. Yeah, and the reason is because they're really dedicated to it, but the other reason is that no one else is doing it. Right. And they want to see the opportunities given to these students. We mentioned that there is scarcity. We need more of we these need. people. Yeah. And um, so that's where it has to come from. It's grassroots. It comes from the classroom. It comes from, from the school level. And then you, you know, dovetail in with the, with the district level. But now it's really hard to get a mentor at the University of Hawaii if you live in Waipahu. Mm. You know, you've got school activities all day and then just a one hour drive and another one hour drive back. How is that going to happen? Not only that, you can't find mentors. I can't tell you how many students have told me, oh, I called everybody in the department, I left everybody emails and never heard back from anybody. And so we need to get more dedication from, from my peers at the university. Right. Yeah, this not getting back is somehow common yeah, and can be frustrating Very occasionally. Common. Yeah. Very okay. common. Okay, we have about one minute left in our conversation today. But I guess one question may be, what, you know, for you, Harry, how do you see the future of the science sphere? Well, what I would like to see is all the doors be open for all the kids, mm -hmm. you know, so no nothing to hinder them. They should be able to, when they're ready for college classes, they should be able to go to college, right? right. When they're ready to do a high level of research stuff, they should be able to find a mentor in the university, get access to the machinery and the equipment necessary to do higher To do the stuff. research, yeah, okay. Yeah. And for you, Brendan and Ryan, what do you see in the for your future now? Brendan, maybe. <laughs> well, we're both looking in, into medicine and research, and uh, for me, personally, I'm trying to keep all of my options open. It may be a little greedy to put it this way, but I'd like to just see everything, try to experience everything, and then... And once, then you choose. Yeah, yeah, once time comes to make the decision, I, I make a good one. How about you, Ryan? Well, I'm, I guess I'm not as open as Brandon. There are a few things I'd really well, like to do. One field, that, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> and those are, well, in my case, really either research or becoming a doctor or something, but still, I'm not too sure, I guess. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you, Harry. Thank, Thank, Thank you, you, Andrea. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Brandon. Thank, Thank you for so coming. Much. And so you've been watching uh, Young Talents Making Way here on Think Tech Hawaii. And next Tuesday, we'll be back for more. Stay tuned.